He's where we just came from. All right, well, good morning. Today, I'm out here a little late. It's right after eight o'clock. And I was gonna do a turkey hunt this morning, which I am. And my older sister and my niece decided they wanna tag along for a hike. And so we came really late. I just located, and there's literally a gobbler that just gobbled right out of the car. I decided to just set up on that bird just in case he decided to come in like 300 yards on the road. But the fact that he is so close to the cars, like he's literally on top of where we parked. I'm assuming he's been worked this season already because it doesn't make sense for a gobbler to be that close to the cars to not be pressured. And my sister and my niece, they still want to hike. So if it was me, I'd just tumble back down there and just try to work this bird. but. We'll just keep hiking and maybe we'll shoot a bird further away from the car. The turkey hunting should only get better and better. We've got this guy responding to me and then we got one way across. He was gobbling too, so I'm assuming as we work this road, it only makes sense that we're gonna run into more birds and less pressured birds. in there.
Turkey down. Turkey down. I'll tie it when I get down there. <laughs> Did you like that? You guys saw him? Yeah. Ever since I located that gobbler right on top of the car and he stopped gobbling, then I was like, whatever, I'm not even gonna turkey hunt today. Today I'm just gonna take my sister and my niece on a hike. And literally we were we were working our way up to the very top of the mountain just to go so they can take a picture of the scenery. That way it wasn't just for nothing. And we got to the very top and I located and this bird was way down here. And you guys saw the whole thing. I was like, dude, we gotta go back and get on his level. Even though I'm pretty sure he was committed enough to hike all the way up to where we were, but <sighs> bang, baby, tag down Washington. He's a little guy. Is he young? Yeah, I think he's like a, he's a two year old bird. A lot of times, like if it's a one year old, if they were born last year, like this beard right here would just like barely poke out. It would be like super short like this. The bigger they get, the longer the beard and the bigger their spurs get, just like chickens. All right guys, well here he is. My second turkey for the Washington State spring turkey season 2020. I'm tagged out in Washington. This is my second outing for a turkey hunt and I'm two for two this year, surprisingly. This is not usually how it happens. Just too good of an opportunity to pass up. Um, he's a lot smaller than the other one I shot. But the fact is, my sister and my niece were here and they were literally watching the whole hunt. So I just figured, you know what? Might as well just shoot a turkey because they've been, they've been hiking hard today. My plan was just to take them to the top. And then once we got to the top, we were just gonna take pictures because up there, there's a pretty nice view up there. And as we almost got to the top, I just located with it. I just chirped as a hen. And this guy gobbled way down at the very bottom. When he first gobbled, I wasn't sure if that was a real thing because up there it was kind of windy. So I stopped and I told my sister and my niece to just stop because I needed to listen. And I chirped again and sure enough, there was a very faint gobble. I chirped a couple more times because I needed to know where he was because I, I wanted to make sure that he wasn't on this road because if he was, then I was gonna change our setup completely. But he wasn't on this road. He was actually on the road below. And so I just told them, I was like, dude, we gotta run back and we gotta go back to this exact spot because this is probably the the best spot for a setup because up there it's kind of brushy. So we got into this little gap and I set up my decoy and this bird, he eventually just came in and I can't really recall what happened because it just happened so fast. But the closer he got, the louder the drumming got. But I wasn't really sure because there was a lot of noise. There was wind, there was birds chirping and the drumming, it's pretty subtle. So I knew he was kind of there and then I just let out a chirp because I wasn't sure if he saw the decoy because it's kind of brushy there. And he gobbled, he hammered right back and I was like, oh yeah, game's on. And after that, every single time he drummed and he was spitting, I heard it. And he literally walked up to the decoy. Again, the fact that my sister and my niece were watching behind me, I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna take them because they've never been on a turkey hunt like this. So give them an experience like that too. And so second tag, notched. Again, it's not the biggest, but should be good eating. Yeah, that's pretty much the hunt today. A hike turned into a hunt. You just gotta love it and you just gotta be thankful for it. All right, so I just kinda wanna give a little bit more background on the turkey's perspective. So when we first located him, he was way down here and we were way at the top up here. And so when, when I said he's game, we ran all the way down this road and this is that little saddle where we set up. And when we got to that saddle right there and we got set up, he, he made his way up here, so he kind of came up like this. And then if you guys look like kind of right here, there's almost like a game trail. You can kind of see the game trail. And he worked through this game trail. And I'm gonna flip the camera around and just kind of imitate what the turkey saw. So we're gonna get level with the turkey. And I'm assuming he took this, this game trail kind of like this. And keep in mind, he's like strutting the whole way. And he doesn't see anything yet, but he knows that I called from this direction and so that little gap right here this is where he came through so he came through right here and by this time I can definitely notice his drumming came over here came like this and then right here this is when he first lays eyes on the decoy and so the decoy is right there and we are sitting in this little trail up here and you can see there's no way he was gonna see us. 
but as he came out of this little opening right here through this little gap right here i could see him but again he's just focused onto the decoy basically what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to make the turkey face in any direction that is not towards us so you can see the decoy is that way so the turkey is facing this way he's not facing towards us which is going to increase the chance of him busting us so he comes out right through here and boom the decoy is just right there and this whole time if you look we're still way behind all these brush you cannot see us and right about here there's this little this little gap and i was just sitting here my sister and my niece was behind me and, and you guys can just see how important it is to sit in the shade in the shade you're almost invisible from here but in the sunlight you're very visible that's why i told them to go sit in the shade and we were just kind of leaning off to the left side from the shooter perspective but on the screen it will be the right side towards over here and that's why he didn't see us even though i was just sitting right in the middle super hard to see that's why you sit in the shade when you're setting up on a bird we are gonna weigh this bird so my my first one this year or three days ago was 17.19 pounds i don't think this one's gonna be as heavy because he's kind of small but we're gonna weigh him Yep, just as I thought, not as big as the other one. It's 15.65 pounds. So 15.65 pounds for the weight. And we're gonna measure his beard and spurs. The longest beard is 8.25 inches. So not too bad for a beard actually. For his spurs, this guy's got short stubby spurs. Half an inch. Half an inch for his left leg and just right over half an inch for his his left leg so again pretty small bird All right, so we made it home and I'm gonna quickly show you guys how I process my turkeys. This is a pretty standard way to process a turkey. Basically, we're just gonna breast it out, take the thighs, and then take the take the gizzard, because I like the gizzard. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, the first thing we're gonna do is, we've got the beard, so a lot of people can just pull this off, but I'd like to just go right at the base with the knife. I'll just cut it and you get your your beard just throw that aside technically you can save the fan too but this guy i'm i'm not gonna save the fan so i'm not gonna do anything we're just gonna make an incision there's a his chest bone right here and we're just gonna make an incision right here and we're just basically gonna skin it so we can access its breast and you can definitely take out some feathers pluck some feathers but to me, I'm not even gonna do that. I'm just gonna make an incision and then just start peeling the, the skin. All right, so you can see it's not the cleanest job, but these little feathers right here, we don't really care because we'll just wash it later. But basically I peel the skin off and we kind of have the thighs exposed and the breast is completely exposed. So we're basically just gonna follow the line and we're basically gonna fillet this breast off. So we're just gonna take our knife and go right to his bone right here and just slowly fillet this breast off. And you don't have to be fast, you just take your time.
And so there we have it. I mean, there's some scraps here, but if you want to make stew or you want to make some kind of broth with the, the actual carcass, you can leave this meat here. Well, again, this bird, he wasn't very big. So this is a pretty nice breast. And then on the inside, this thing right here, this is called its tenderloin. And I like to keep it attached to the breast just because it makes it easier to handle. And so you can see, we basically just filleted this breast off and we're gonna do the same exact process onto this side. All right, and there's the second breast with the tenderloin. And when you uh, shoot a turkey, you can actually just look at the, the meat itself and you can see, or at least a lot of times, you can see where your BBs hit. And so far, both of these breasts show no sign of BBs hitting, so made a pretty good shot to the head. Saved a lot of meat. And so right now, since we're done with the breast, we're gonna continue our incision to skin it. And we're gonna focus on the thighs. So you can see I skinned it way down here. Just continue to rip it as far as you can. And a lot of times you can just kind of break the joint. You see? So there's a joint right here. And basically you just cut the meat in a straight line right there. And again, these little feathers right here, we'll just clean it later. And then once, once I get done with the other one, I'll show you guys how to remove the leg. All right, and once again, we have this skin peeled off. Just gonna break the joint. That joint pops out right there. And we're just gonna make our cut. And voila, again, with these little skin pieces here, we'll just uh, skin it off after we get all this done with and my tag still on the feet. And again, I'll show you guys how to remove the feet. So that's pretty much the majority of the meat. You take the breast, you take the thighs, and you can see the, the turkey's pretty much emptied. I mean, there's the wings, but a lot of times the, the meat on the wings, is just not worth the hassle. But if you're like me and you like the gizzard, you take your knife right behind his cavity bone, his cavity, and just break it wide open like this. And you can see all its internal organs are right here. And you can pretty much pull whatever you want. But the only thing I want is his gizzard, which is right here. And take a knife cut it and that's a gizzard right there I also like the liver forgot to mention the liver but I do like the liver boom you got the liver and that's pretty much all I use I mean there's the heart in here if you like the heart there's the lungs and then the intestines I don't do anything with the intestines and pretty much here well there you go if you want to save some feathers you can if not then this goes into the garden compost and becomes fertilizer. Now for this part where you remove the, the feet from the, the thigh, you just come to the backside and there should be a, a little tendon right here. I'm not sure if the tendon is the right word, but just take your knife, cut that tendon, and you can see this thing flops free now. Turn it to the other side and there should be also one right here as well. And then once you have that, you can kind of just break the leg. And then just take your knife and cut the, cut the tissue that's holding it together. Boom. And if you want to save a feet with a spur, you can, but this guy's got short stubby spurs. So the only thing I'm going to keep off of this bird is the beard. So we'll just put that aside. And there's your thigh. And again, with this little skin attached to here, you can just take your time and just go through and just skin it. Basically on this side, I'm just gonna do the same exact thing. And then for the gizzard, here's the gizzard. We're just gonna make our incision around this. And we're gonna open it. 
and when you open it you can kind of see that there's this inner lining and it holds pretty much what it's been eating and you don't want to do anything with all that garbage so just try to remove and peel away from the gizzard boom so you have that lining you have that lining with all that junk just throw it away and now you have a clean gizzard and like all this junk right here again just wash it real clean when you're gonna eat it and that's pretty much how I clean my turkey depending on how I want to do it but this is a pretty standard way So this is all the ingredients that I'm going to be using with this vegetable oil right here. So since I'm just cooking one meal for me, I don't need a lot of ingredients. So this right here is the turkey tenderloin. So I'm not using the breast itself, I'm just using one of the tenderloins. And then here we've got some sesame seeds. And this right here is soy sauce mixed with oyster sauce. And you just whisk it, that way uh, the sauce is pretty evenly distributed because you don't want soy sauce tasting too much in one particular part of the dish and then oyster sauce too strong in another part of the dish so you whisk it together and it should be good to go again it's pretty windy and then next is just green onions or scallions and then here we have half of one yellow onion it's diced and then we also got one clove of garlic in here minced and then we've got two eggs and we've just got salt pepper and just good old white rice, cold rice. So I'm gonna put these aside. And the first thing we're gonna do, cut our turkey tenderloin into like bite-sized pieces. So. You can use turkey thighs because thighs tend to not dry out as fast as a turkey breast but I have another recipe that I want to do with the turkey thighs instead so we're just going to use white meat for here and with the turkey tenderloin there's this strip of sinew and you can just throw that away unless you like to chew your food around if it's too small I don't really mind but for that chunk it was pretty big so all right well there we go it's just some small pieces of turkey tenderloin and we're just gonna season this with salt. Some salt to taste. And then just some, just some black pepper. And that's all for the turkey. We're not marinating it, so we don't have to wait.
And the final step, sesame seeds. There she is, just dish of deliciousness. Fried rice is my favorite dish in the whole world. Anybody who knows me personally knows that. I decided to eat in the car because it's too windy outside and it's, it's just not fun out there. So I didn't talk to you guys or walk you guys through the process. So I'm gonna quickly recap what I did. So the first thing I did was I scrambled two eggs and once I cooked those, I just threw it aside inside some aluminum foil and then put in some more oil and cooked my onion and my garlic. After that, I threw in the turkey breast and I basically just cooked it until the turkey breast was done. And then I added my rice, added my green onions and my eggs and my oyster and soy sauce mixture. And then after that, I just stirred it all around, mixed everything around and just cooked it for another minute and then transferred it over to a plate. Easy recipe. So I'm gonna say a quick prayer and we're gonna eat. So here we go, this is just rice and onion and stuff like that. Mmm. Oh yeah, that is so good. Mm-hmm. Right there. So good. That turkey is perfect too. Just so juicy and so tender. With turkey breast or white meat in general, you don't want to overcook it because if, if you overcook it, it gets dry. So try not to overcook white meat. That's why with fried rice, a lot of people tend to use like chicken thighs because dark meat, it doesn't dry out as bad or as fast as white meat. But once you do it a couple times, the white meat, perfect. This right here is by far my favorite catch clean cook I've ever done on my whole entire YouTube channel. So good, definitely one of my best catching cooks I've ever done. Cleaned out the plate. I'm gonna finish watching this brand new video from Northwest Fishing Secrets and then I'm gonna clean up and then I'm gonna go back home. I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you guys learned something. But with that being said, I will see you guys on the next video.